the past decade, teens, especially girls, have experienced dramatic increases in experiences of violence and poor mental health and suicide risk. America's teen girls are engulfed in a growing wave of sadness, violence, and trauma. Some alarming new data from the CDC suggesting an uptick of mental health challenges in teens with high school girls reporting issues at record high levels. For more on this, let's bring in board-certified clinical psychologist Dr. Jeffrey Gardier and former Homeland Security Advisor and Secret Service Special Agent and Newsmax contributor Charles Marino. Good morning, gentlemen. Dr. Gardier, I'll start with you. The CDC's Youth Risk Behavior Survey showing an intense increase in feelings of sadness among high school girls, 57 percent compared to 29 percent of boys in 2021. Thoughts of suicide also increasing over a 10-year period. Dr. Gardier, this is alarming. This is really scary as a parent. What is causing this? Well, we know that a lot of this had to do uh, right before uh, the pandemic. Uh, we're looking between 2011, 2018, 2018 to uh, 2021. Uh, but a lot of this has to do with, as they say, the stuff rolls downhill. Uh, women, girls, minorities, LGBTQ are the ones that are most vulnerable. And therefore, when we see more aggression in society, less financial resources, do, do, less a, resources I mean, a, in the school. Story, so I'm going to do a few let, on that. I just got in there. Uh, Ch Charles, I want to talk about violence. Uh, you know, we, we think about the amount of mass shootings this year alone. And then we are hearing about sexual violence. In 2021, the CDC reported one in five girls in grades 9 to 12 experienced sexual violence in the past year. One in 10 forced to have sex. Uh, why is this happening? Is this, is this society, as Dr. Gardier was mentioning? Is it social media? Is it COVID? Uh, what's causing this? I think it's a combination of all three that you just mentioned, which were the ones I was going to bring up specifically. I mean, look. Uh, as the father of a 17-year-old daughter, Allison, you know, we're all there. Um, we know that social media is a rough place, and we know the drawbacks of social media, and that is there are no more personal relationships. There's no more ability to learn personal conflict resolution. And what this causes, tied with the hopelessness that people feel when the, what they see on social media and around the country, um, they make poor decisions and they start to act out. And for some, specifically males, but we're starting to see this traverse uh, with females, is they act out in violent ways. Specifically with men, we see it act out, uh, unfortunately, in uh, mass shootings. Um, we've got to call it as we see it. It's males that commit these acts and the age, age ranges that we're talking about today. Yeah, and I think the big question is, is, is how do we stop this? Because we, we continue to talk about this. Dr. Gardier, I have daughters, and I have to say I have conversations with them a lot, and they have friends who have depression. They have friends who have anxiety. I have dealt with things such as that in, in our home. Um, and I think that even myself, there were signs but I didn't see them, and I thought I was a really good observant parent. Um, and usually it's after, it's, oh, well, that happened. I should have noticed. Talk to us about what some signs that parents should look for in their kids, uh, because I think it's so important you know, to nip this in the bud. Well, if your child is afraid to go to school, maybe there's a situation there as far as bullying, uh, but certainly isolating oneself, crying, cutting behaviors, as we often see, the irritability that uh, kids may have, because it's not always about being just fully depressed, but also angry, not being able to identify why they feel that way. And then, of course, you'll see the physiological changes uh, where they may have some sleep issues or maybe some eating issues or eating disorders. Yeah, you mentioned eating disorders in April. The CDC, they're going to release um, other information regarding di diet and exercise. I know that I've, you know, seen and read stories about, you know, increase in eating disorders. And you've got to wonder, again, if it has to play a role with social media. Uh, Charles, I know you have a teenager. You just mentioned that. We talk about social media. There's bullying. There's violence that's happening, not only, you know, on the, the school field, but also on social media. I see kids are wondering, how many likes did I get? Or, oh, I didn't get invited to that event. We saw a tragic death and a suicide of a New Jersey 14-year-old girl. Um, I know we as parents have to monitor what our kids see, but should there be oversight? Does something else need to be done besides having parents try and monitor what our kids are watching? 
Yeah, good point. You know, right now, social media companies have no liability uh, issues on their part. This was something that Congress granted them under the Communications Decency Act, specifically Section 230. And I think it's something that needs to be revisited by Congress, because right now, social media really is the Wild West out there, Allison. And it goes back to the saying, you can't please all the people all the time. And that's where these poor teenagers find themselves on social media, being bullied, being nitpicked, uh, being spoken about in, in group chats and things like that. And look, well, the statistics that we're talking about today, these are just some of the pre-indicators that can go cause both females and males to act out and act out violently sometimes. So you need the family support system, you need a group of friends, and you need school counselors to be looking out and really yeah. monitoring what is very hard to monitor. Great points. Uh, gentlemen, great conversation. Dr. Gardier, Charles Marino, thank you so much. Appreciate it.